Hello everyone, Lau here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to um, part two of uh, this last flea market adventure. And we're continuing here right where I left you off with this box of vintage dolls. Yeah, I cannot say just Barbie because they're also from other um, manufacturers. Basically, I just um, like was teasing you if I bought some of them because this is such an interesting box. I mean, uh, this is one of those small ones. It's also, I already forgot what, what they are called. Um, uh, but like all of the stuff, I just started uh, seeing uh, all of the uh, fashion I saw uh, that looks so 70s. But then I started looking up uh, the dolls directly. And this, for example, is a skipper. Uh, it's from Mattel, so she belongs to Barbie. <laughs> but um, I checked her and she is uh, so her mold says uh, 1960 something but she's definitely from the 70s um, then this doll she looks so interesting I just found out that she belongs to the disco girls um, line from Hasbro yeah I checked her back it, she said 1970 something Hasbro 72 or so um, never heard of the disco girls line uh, this guy <laughs> He belongs to the Sunshine family. At that moment, I also had no clue. This is a Cindy doll, um, all 70s. She even wears her original outfit. Yeah, she's a ballerina, Cindy. Um, she, yeah, well, sorry for, for stumbling here, but um, I was so like interested that I stopped filming and researched. So this is the whole Sunshine family. Um, Sunshine family was a like Afro-American um, doll line also made by Mattel to be like the how, how should I say it but the the American Afro-American part like of Barbie she, they don't belong into the Barbie line but um, so yeah that, that's where I looked 73 Mattel um, they are so interesting looking she's not wearing her original dress but um, the boy is and the baby I think as well sorry for the shaky camera but that's like I was so like oh my goodness yeah, I checked all of them when where are they from what time are they from um, this is again the Hasbro doll they all have like uh, real eyelashes I mean most of them um, the sunshine family even has those glass eyes This I couldn't find out what she is. She looks beautiful. I mean, for for a girl, for a um, like 70s doll, her face looks really cute, and no markings at all. If you know what they are, I could not find out. Uh, yeah, as I said, this is the the ballerina Cindy from uh, the early 70s. She's missing her hands, so that's like I also rummaged through uh, the box. There were no hands for her, and yeah. Basically at that moment here when I filmed this now, I was pretty sure I wouldn't buy any of them They weren't expensive or anything like the guy said. Oh, if you take the whole box I can give it to you for cheap and he said like per doll maybe two euro two three euro depending etc. So If you are into that uh, I was really like oh, that's probably a steal for those 70s dolls Look at all of those shoes and accessories. It comes with a whole suitcase of clothes. Um, yeah, but at that moment, I was really like decided already. No, I'm not getting them. That's not what I collect. I don't want to resell. Um, I'm just sorry. I hope someone else finds them. But it was such an interesting box. Like, well, of course, there was more uh, stuff. There. You can see clothes. Like even furniture, yeah, even furniture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of those bell button trousers. Super interesting, just not my stuff. Yeah, when I was digging through those Barbie boxes, that was really like, should I have picked some up? Should I have not? I really don't want them. Um, but you know what? Uh, like, uh, got me, got my mood up better was when I found this little dude here.
because if I just compare it, of course those Barbies, they are super vintage, maybe they are worth a little bit more, but do I really want them? No. Do I want this? Yes. <laughs> this is actually a dinosaur from the turtles. Uh, he belongs into the like cave turtles line from 1990, uh, a little bit later, 1996 or 5, let me, let me check again. Ooh. I think it says 1996. Um, all of the four turtles uh, were released in kind of, you know, like caveman with bones in, on, on the head or whatever. And all of them came uh, equipped with a dinosaur. Uh, this uh, is actually the dinosaur belonging to, to uh, Mikey, so to Michelangelo. Um, and it was called uh, Cave Turtle Mike with Silly Stegosaurus. Well, this guy is missing part of his tail, which is kind of sad, but I'm happy that uh, the saddle uh, was attached, uh, though it's also sometimes missing. And, you know, it's colorful. I love dinosaurs, like, in general. Uh, I also have a little bit of a normal, like, dinosaur collection going on, so everything that mixes something up with dinosaurs, I'm really into. Um, and the turtles figures are just so, when they are so colorful and so bright, I really love them. They look funny. They they have great skulls. I mean, here you can even see TMNT, so teenage mutant ninja turtles. <laughs> um, and I know a real turtle collector would never pick him up without the tail, but then it's ideal for me, right? I'm not really <laughs> into uh, collecting those toy lines, but when I find something and I can haggle her down a little bit price-wise, then it's okay, because actually it was the same lady as a street shark. But you go around and then you come like back to the front, but it's actually two different rows at the front. And she has kind of two different stands, one there and one there. And one when you enter you find this, and when you leave you find the other one. I couldn't, so otherwise I would have tried to bundle them up to get a better deal, but still was like no 10 no 5 no uh, um, 8 euro is what I paid it's probably too much for a flea market and him with missing his tail but I never really find these cool turtles out there and um, super happy about him uh, the last thing actually was this huge table where I actually thought I won't find anything um, the same seller uh, that I got uh, all of the Star Wars figures um, kind of a month ago or whenever that was but um, yeah he didn't have any new Star Wars but he had lots of other stuff yeah this whole table uh, the seller said it's from um, it's stuff kind of from an estate sale so I was not really thinking that there would be something interesting but that looked pretty interesting it looks like a Mighty Max um, it's not a Mighty Max, but it's definitely a knockoff of, of those. Um, most of the stuff's pretty cheap. This is a McDonald's toy, but um, with a Disneyland theme. It's uh, Snow White's um, house. I have one other. So I uh, was a little bit more interested after finding those two things. Uh, digging deeper. But as you see, most of it's pretty cheaply plasticky toys, no toy lines really. Um, but all of this was, was it one euro or was it all of this was 50 cents? I don't actually remember. I think one, every piece a euro and you can also always haggle uh, with him. So. I found actually another one of these, I think uh, right uh, after I filmed, but yeah, here I wanted to show you again that this is actually the same seller that I found uh, the, the huge Star Wars lot um, last time. Uh, he has lots of those like action figures. Uh, most of it actually is uh, Schleich, so girl stuff from Schleich, like horses and animals. And uh, and lots of dinosaurs, so it's always worth having a look into like a huge bunch of dinosaurs because they um, There could be some uh, vintage Jurassic Park in between or like dino riders uh, 
Most often it's not, most often it's all like rubbery dinosaurs. A lot of it is Schleich, which is a good quality dinosaur, but I don't really collect them. I have a lot of them. Uh, yeah, a lot of toy cars, um, lots of these Kinder Surprise Egg uh, things like this uh, Care Bear. I don't know what it actually is, but it's something <laughs> from Care Bears. Um, this looked like, I don't know, broken transformer or something, but it, it, it wasn't a transformer, it was something that looked similar. So I'm not interested in that. Bunch of little stuff, all, most of it probably a Kinder Surprise Egg. Yeah, always <laughs> uh, carrying my stuff around that I already knew I would get. LPS, uh, but basically I really didn't like the look of this one, so... I think it had some kind of mechanic in there. Oh, not that interested. But it's always so much fun, um, like digging in those uh, boxes where you already knew you found stuff, uh, so you're hoping to find more. I picked up these three kind of miniature toys. None of them are really like super special. They're not Mighty Max. This is not Polly Pocket. Um, let's start with this one. Um, this is actually a McDonald's toy. It says Mac uh, Disneyland Paris um, and it represents one of the rides, I think, like, like Snow White's Scary Adventure or whatever. Like this is Snow White's Cottage. Really cozy, lovely. I have one uh, other of this kind of McDonald's thing. I have the Small World one, uh, but this one was empty. So at first I was not really sure what it actually is meant to be. So I was like, this is probably empty as well, but... Ta -da! This one isn't because it's actually a, like, Mickey and, and Minnie and all of those characters of the Fab Five, I think, uh, pop out of these little play sets. That's actually all it is. You can put them like this, close it, and then... Ta -da! So I was not really happy that uh, this time the Mickey uh, was in here. Not sure if this one directly came with Mickey or if it actually would have come with Minnie or whatever. Really, who cares? This one in here. Um, so of course, and from this middle table there, the big uh, like where I grabbed through everything, uh, every piece was one euro. So um, yeah, and I picked up these kind of Mighty Max knockoffs. Um, this one you saw that I opened it and I was like, oh, cool. Because it looks like a crocodile or, or you know, a dragon or a dinosaur. And you open it up and there's a little miniature world in there. There used to be, uh, here's also like a dinosaur diorama back here. Uh, super colorful, this thing moves. Of course, no figures included anymore. But this thing looks so cool from the outside. It really like has the Mighty Max vibe. So I really like this one. Uh, it's actually from Simba. Uh, I think I have told you a lot about uh, this company. It's a German toy company who is mostly known for doing knockoffs. So they have My Little Pony knockoffs a lot. <laughs> uh, they are doing them ever since the first generation ponies. So um, they also have they have uh, Steffi Love, which is a Barbie knockoff. They, at one point, they even did a straight up um, a Monster High knockoff with like monster Barbie-ish dolls, you know, all that stuff. So I'm not surprised that they also did Mighty Max knockoffs. So, brah. If you don't know, Mighty Max are kind of the boy Polly Pocket. The original Mighty Max are from Bluebird. <laughs> this one. Uh, looks like a volca volcano from the outside. It doesn't say anything other than made in China, so it's not not even from from uh, Zimba. So it's probably even cheaper. But when you open this one, it also reveals a dinosaur type. Oh, here, here is like a caves. Actually, can you see how cheaply this sticker was put on? <laughs> 
uh, but the lower part is quite cool and the coolest thing is it even came with one of the little dinosaurs so this is a little uh, oh my goodness Dimetrodon and here also it's like you can move the volcano fire a little bit comes out and then here is this there are these skeletons <laughs> typical Mighty Max uh, knockoff thing. This definitely looks better from the inside, I think, than from the outside. It's kind of boring from the outside. It looks more like a rock lord from the outside. <laughs> and this definitely looks better from the outside, I think. So, I think this was the last flea market for today. And again, it's the, the, the one that everyone says it's so touristy, but I find very good stuff here. Um, today was just boys toys, so to say. I mean, if you want to group it like this. I found a street shark and it's literally the street shark that I wanted the most because it's, I mean, I'm not exactly sure if there are several ones that have hair, but this is one that has hair, like the street shark with brushable hair, you know, that's the, the heavy metal one. Um, I found the dinosaur, uh, one of the dinosaurs of the stegosaurus from uh, the vintage TMNT line. Uh, so I found vintage Ninja Turtles kind of things. Again, I mean, it's missing its tail, but I could haggle her down. I mean, she's one that her prices are actually not what I want to pay at flea markets. But if I like, if I find this and then I leave it there, it's like. I think you have seen a lot of those um, 70s uh, like Barbie kind of dolls. I probably stood there for half an hour and couldn't decide if I should get one or not. I mean, you should probably think that, uh, well, you're actually more into girl toys, right? Vintage girl toys. So why are you picking them, them like uh, three sharks and turtles instead of like Barbie and um, Cindy, but I like can't get around to picking them up. I don't like dolls so much. Um, one was definitely a like from the 70s. Uh, I think they were all from the 70s. A skipper. Um, one was a Cindy missing the hands. Uh, then it was a full um, Sunshine family. Uh, that's kind of the Afro-American. Um, I probably already told you this, but I'm just like, I need to tell you this also in front of the camera right now. Um, Afro-American uh, kind of Barbies. They have glass eyes and they are also from 73. Um, and there were two, uh, one of those dolls, they all had uh, like, uh, they had um, like lashes. One of those was from Hasbro. So I have no idea what Hasbro produced during that time, how, how those were called. Um, and there were two others and everything, like all of the fashion, so 70s. They were like, you know, bell bottom trousers and, and, and those floral prints. And I just can't get around with this aesthetic. Like literally, I think the 70s are like, like fashion wise and from the look and everything, it's, it's the, the uh, decade that I like the least. I, I just don't like the aesthetic. So I also kind of don't like the aesthetic of those dolls. You, probably you think you are so stupid. They are worth a lot. Sure, I could pick them up. They were around two euro, three euro. He said if I take the whole box, it's of course less, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I could pick them up and then resell them. Should I do this? Probably. Do I want to do this? No. I much rather like have like in the back of my head that some Barbie or vintage doll uh, collector gets there and then they find it. It's a full like uh, wardrobe, um, like a uh, suitcase, lots of shoes, lots of smaller dolls. Like, I hope someone finds it or someone who is a good reseller picks it up and knows uh, how to put it online. I just don't want to bother with putting stuff online and haggling with people online. It's, it's just not, it's just 
just not worth for me you know I have my normal daytime job that pays me my my bills and I don't want to like make a couple of extra euros with reselling this is the only thing I could have done with those dolls I really would not have liked to keep them it's not my thing so I'm actually pretty relieved right now that I didn't pick them up it was so much more fun now that I in the end I found uh, the turtles dinosaur and I found some uh, like knockoff Mighty Max so like a crocodile one and one uh, like a volcano I think one of them is from Simba so I like this way more than a vintage Skipper or Cindy or um, so I just wanted to like film this right now because it's still fresh here, the flea market is still there and not just like film my impression uh, at home of, of this experience um, here because I don't know you probably think I'm stupid for not picking up uh, the vintage dolls, the vintage Barbies so then I'm stupid <laughs> see ya the next day I went really I went to four flea markets and the first three flea markets there was really nothing I couldn't film anything there was nothing um, so when I came to the last one which was actually I just had the idea to go to this one because it's really close to the last one I was you can walk to there uh, but I know it uh, opens up a little bit later it says it opens up at 10 I was there 15 minutes earlier um, and nothing was there all the stands were there completely empty uh, this is like really uh, contrary to, to what people say be there early be there even uh, before uh, it officially opens up but, but there was nothing the people were sitting at the empty tables um, and I was like what's, what's, what's up here so I was just like okay let's sit down because it's actually the one at Boxhagener Platz so Boxy flea market at Boxy so I was then like let's just sit down in the park there do something watch people let's wait and right at 10 o'clock the people were allowed to put their stuff on the tables before that it's they're not allowed to put the stuff on the tables so around maybe I don't know 10 minutes 15 minutes later I started walking around and when they were still picking out them so um, I didn't film this one a vendor uh, it was a huge box of Barbie clothes so I was just starting digging in there actually I don't I never think that I will find anything there because I'm not really looking for Barbie and especially not for Barbie clothes um, <laughs> but I actually I was pretty surprised so I was pretty surprised that I found things there um, one thing is this this uh, is a this is a tail to one of the Barbies that I had when I was a child to the um, in German she was called Märchenhaar Barbie so I think it's the jewel jewel hair mermaid I never know the name uh, but ever since last year I've went to flea markets I have already picked up the top the skirt and now the tail so I'm kind of collecting this outfit together um, I also picked up this thing I think it must be a sleeping bag for Barbies I just really love this fabric um, I think I want to uh, make my, maybe a scrunchie or something out of this fabric uh, it's so 90s it screams 90s neon I love it that's why I picked this one up um, and at the bottom of all of these like fabric things which of course they are on top of, of the box uh, there were so many little small things there were lots of Barbie brushes I was like hoping maybe there's a pony brush no uh, but I found this uh, funny looking uh, troll necklace Oops. So it's, it's, it's one of the typical trolls, you know them. And this one really is meant to be a necklace. So it's not that someone put a hole in it. No, it's, it's meant to be a necklace. 
So I was like super intrigued. Yes, I want to have that. I can put it around my neck and look 80s. Or 90s, probably it's more from the 90s. And do you know what I also found in one of the like, like corners right at the bottom? This. Hmm? What is this? <laughs> I found a Polly Pocket um, doll. Um, really good condition. It's a male uh, one. It's also the same mold. So I was just like, um, oh wait, is this the guy from Starlight Castle? The prince? Uh, no, it's it's not. It's just the same mold. It's the prince from Starlight Castle isn't um, isn't blonde. This one's a pretty late figure. It's from 1997, so the last year of uh, vintage Bluebird Polly Pockets. It's from a set called Magical Moving. No, not Polyville. Magic Magical Moving Fairyland. I will never own that set. I do not like it. It's very big. It's very chunky, but it's. Basically the same kind of technique then with Magical Move in Polyville. There's one Poly doll in there that has a magnet and you can move her around the set with a special technique. He's just one of the included characters. But how cool is that? Fighting a Poly Pocket doll in a bunch of Barbie clothes. I also picked up these two. These are Barbies, but these are the McDonald's Barbies. And I kind of really like them. Um, I actually prefer the ones that are a little bit earlier. So McDonald's started in 1991 collaboration with Barbie, with Mattel, to every year bring like release one set of like Happy Meal toys related to Barbie. Uh, the first two um, sets did not have brushable hair. They had just like plastic sculpted uh, hair. I actually kind of like those more because they are also wearing the very early 90s fashion. So puffy dresses, puffy sleeves, really cute pastel colors. Never found one of those. I have one that has like a kind of a pastel dress uh, that I found last year at a flea market. Uh, that's like from 1995. These ones are, they scream neon late 90s. So I guess, I couldn't find out like really, but I guess that these are more from 1996, 1997, around that time. One of them is a roller skating Barbie. Also a little bit tanned skin. Looks really cool. She's got her helmet in her hand. The other one is more like a, I don't know, aerobic or, or something. This one also like can turn. If you would put her in something, then um, it would make her turn. I cannot do that because I don't have this thing, but it's still cool. This came with her. I'm pretty sure it doesn't belong to her. I think this belongs to the, um, to one of my childhood Barbies uh, called, in, in German she was called a gymnastic Barbie, so like gymnast Barbie or something. Um, I just realized that when I was at home that it probably doesn't belong to this one. Uh, so whenever I find one of my childhood Barbies, <laughs> I have this piece already. No, but I really like to pick up those Barbie McDonald's toys. They are small, they are so much of the era, so that's why I, I, I like them. Uh, much more than having real Barbies on my shelves. What's in there? What's in there? I think it's all fakies, but you never know. I mean, this is a real Fluttershy, but I'm not doing flush. Fake G 3.5. This is a Leonard fakey, or at least it looks like. Oh! That's a Generation 2 pony. Um, guess how many I already have of exactly this pony? It's now my fourth pony of this one. Oh, oh that's a G3.5 baby. And this is a pony though. What else? Fakey. Oh, that's cute. That's also a fakey. Thank you. 
never seen a fakie of a uh, sweetheart sister pony in a sweetheart sister pony mold. Very interesting. What's this? Oh, wow. Looks more like a cabbage patch fakie. Okay, rainbow dash. Another fakie. There are no more real ponies. So sad. Oh, but this is one of the. Um, not exactly sure if it's one of the ones that glow in the dark, but I like those fakies. Could be. That's a real Pinkie Pie. I mean, I have already Pinkie Pie now two times. Not sure. Oh, 1997, so from the 90s. Oh, a cabbage patch. What's that? Oh, this is probably the brush. Nah, I don't know if this is the brush to this pony, but this is a G 3.5 brush. Never had one before. These are probably quite cute fakies, but yeah, I'm not too much into it. <gasps> this is a snuggle bumps um, brush. This is a snuggle bumps brush. Nice, nice, nice. Barbie horse brush. Someone called me. Is that? Some more LPS, but I think I'm good with LPS right now. I have I've like bought so many, like last weekend. So that should be. Interesting because these are like the poly, po poly pocket fakes. Interesting. May I see this? Yeah. I'm sorry. It's for... for... 
Du tog dem? Ja, ja, du. Ja, den er skøn. Åh, det er jeg nu. Kom igen. Igen. I love those when I was a child. Like this was my stuff. <laughs> oh my goodness, this vendor was amazing. I think I spent a lot of time there, um, kind of also a lot of money, um, but uh, she was really nice. She allowed me to film, so I went full into it. She had this full box of ponies. Not a lot of real ponies, but anyways, she had this bin of like small things. She had LPS, she had cassettes. So I really went full into it. You saw a lot of the things that I picked up. Let's just start with the ponies. I picked up these two Leonard fakie baby ponies. Uh, you know that I'm not big into fakie collecting. I have said this multiple times. I just pick up fakies that I think look interesting, look cute, remind me of something. It's just like, I don't know, I've never seen one of these sitting baby ponies. Um, in like, in real life, I've just seen them on photos. I always think they are cute. I mean, the Leonard fakies in general look pretty cute. There was another one in there, but I, I shouldn't pick up like big fakies actually. So I decided to pick up these small Leonard fakies. This one has a symbol. This one does not, I don't know. This one has tinsel hair, but they have these cute eyes. Um, this one's a little bit discolored. You can see it's orangey on the outside here. Um, I got the hair pretty nice again. So they are really sweet. Uh, they are from the 90s. So this one directly says 1997. This one doesn't, but uh, they, they must be from the 90s. So picked up this little uh, sweet um, fakie. Uh, this is actually my favorite type of fakie. I have one that glows in the dark. I have another one that glows in the Those are from uh, Zimba, the um, I think Sternlicht ponies or something. So starlight ponies, so they all glow in the dark. This one does not, but this one has this super super soft like cotton candy-ish hair that also the um, the uh, watercolor baby sea ponies, the real watercolor baby sea ponies have. So, uh, and they do ch have like color changing hair. So this one definitely was a pony that when you put it in hot or cold water, it would change the hair color and you then could see the symbols. Sadly, it doesn't work anymore. It's definitely from the early 90s or something around that time. So I'm not surprised it doesn't work anymore. But you can still see a little bit that the back part here 
I used to be probably used to get more a little bit um, purple while this had probably a different color the tail not the tail is just normal pony hair I'm really surprised how, how nice the um, like the factory curl came back really soft really nice quality actually and if you look closely you can see the butterflies uh, that are the symbols yeah you can see it there and I'm 100% sure when they would get in touch with I mean hot or cold depending water then they would show up it doesn't work anymore but I like these kind of donkey baby donkey fakies I really like them uh, and this is a nice color so sure I picked it up and the last fakie that I picked up is this one um, this is a fakey that's in the sweetheart sister uh, pose so actually the dainty pose um, just for comparison this is a real pony this is the fakey uh, it's, it's the exact same um, like body shape just I think the front leg is a little bit but not so much stretched out um, and I really do like uh, the sweetheart sister ponies so I've never seen a um, like fake in this mold I mean I've seen it on pictures but but not in real life so I couldn't help myself uh, other than getting it she has this lovely uh, butterfly which has nice colors uh, the one thing I don't like is that she has these glass eyes it's interesting I just do not really like it I would much rather prefer her to have normal eyes. Uh, she is definitely from the company G Joe. Um, that's the company that most often does these glass eyes. I have seen ponies from this company in this mold, um, also with this butterfly than in other um, color schemes. I really like that she's kind of pearlescent a little bit and the body feels good. It is squishy, not too squishy, not too hard. and. Yeah, the hair is a mess but I didn't like straighten it etc because I want to rehair her I want to rehair her with nice uh, colors maybe the same colors uh, that her cutie mark has or something uh, maybe I don't know get rid of this green eyeshadow I've, I have no idea but I want to do something with her because um, I think she can be a really really beautiful pony yeah but there were some real ponies this little pony bill um, um, Scootaloo and this little G3.5 Tula Rula. So these are the sitting babies. These are the baby ponies of the G3.5 line. But otherwise the ponies look like this and these are the babies to this. I just have one other baby pony. So her hair, I mean, they don't have really hair. It's more like a fabric. It's it's definitely cut, but yeah, I mean, nice to have it. This Tula Rula, I always recognize her because of these swirls. And this is Scootaloo from the Ponyville, which which goes into the G3 and G3.5 line. So they make sense together. Uh, the uh, brushes that came with probably not with this pony because doesn't have any brushable hair but with the other G3.5 ponies uh, they do look like this and this is the first one that I've ever seen these are the only My Little Pony brushes that really say My Little Pony on them so they're easily recognizable they have the swirl they're actually pretty nice shape uh, otherwise they look like the typical G3 brushes with these thick um, I don't know teeth or whatever you call them uh, so I also picked that up and then I found these two generation two ponies at first the one I saw was this one and I was like laughing because um, it's not my fourth morning glory it's my third morning glory in this exact shape and form I have two more morning glories that are a little bit more special with like tinsel hair and the other one with uh, with super long hair so they, they are different variants of, of this pony but the only G2 ponies that I find at flea markets are always Morning Glory. What's up with this pony? Why is it out there? Was this like 
the best seller ever and that no other I mean there are more G2 ponies obviously than, than just Morning Glory. I always find Morning Glory. It's kind of a running joke you could say. I'm army building Morning Glories as well. Um, so I couldn't even leave her there because it's like I, I gotta pick her up you know. And like the last thing I found I mean I would have even like missed it um, if I wouldn't have gone into it again for one last time. I mean it's so tiny you know. This is a baby pony um, of the Generation 2 line. Um, this is the first one I ever have. I mean it has cut hair and there's also some marks on her which I couldn't remove. They're so tiny. I, I never had one in my hand before so I was kind of picturing them being bigger. Like I don't know maybe more like this size or whatever. Um, they are so tiny and so cute. Uh, this little girl is called, let me check, this is called Flitter and she's actually a um, playset pony. So of course in the Generation 2 line also playsets were released and this one was um, the Giggle, oh my god, the Giga Garden Nursery. So it was like a nursery playset but also with the garden part and this was the pony that was included, this baby pony uh, from 2000. So she's from 1997, this one's from 2000. Uh, her forelock is cut, so not really nice. And part of her symbol is uh, already rubbed off. She doesn't have any gems in her eyes anymore. I couldn't, I still couldn't leave her there. At least she doesn't have tail rust because I also have another morning glory with tail rust, so I should really do something about it. And this little girl, so cute she still has the gems in the eyes I mean can you see that not really good but they are in there there you can see it um, and of course her hair would be longer way longer um, and the symbol is this heart with a flower in there and these red things I don't know can't, just can't get off still so cute in my very first generation 2 baby pony it's like crazy how I've almost missed this one. So, if. Yeah, this Snuggle Bumps brush I also picked up. Snuggle Bumps brushes are easily identifiable. They say play school and the, on the inside and have this heart on the outside. And they go to like these type of toys here, these snuggle bums. This one goes to a baby snuggle bum uh, called um, Charlie. I think it's the pink one with yellow hair. Um, at least I found out this is the only one that has like a darker uh, pink brush. These kind of brushes are really nice to go through this. That, that's not really hair, that's more like fur, you know, like trolls have. And that's also really nice to brush through this uh, color changing here. Makes it really soft. That's what I found out. <laughs> um, anyways. And then this this like uh, super small box with most of them were like super small animals. So when I had the idea that hmm, maybe there are some Polly Pocket animals in between. No, they weren't Polly Pocket animals. They were directly Polly Pocket dolls. So funny that I found this little blonde dude in the other uh, box from the other seller and I actually picked up these four figurines. Uh, two of them are real Polly Pocket uh, figures and two of them are fakes because as I said uh, with uh, these uh, things here, Mighty Max fakies, of course they were also Polly Pocket uh, fakes. So knockoffs. But those dolls still look pretty nice. I mean this one not so much. I think also her mouth has rubbed off. The paint job of course is not good. This one's pretty nice. Uh, the difference, very easy to identify, is that they don't have the hinge. They cannot bend at all. It's, it's pretty cute, I have to say. So I will put, put, put them definitely in one of my like empty Polly Pockets. But I have found two real Polly Pocket dolls. This is the male character. I think he's called Willy or Wee Willy or something. Um, and this is the, the 
typical uh, poly pocket from like the early sets. So this is, they are both from 1989 and um, they were included in several sets and also together in several sets. So what I found out definitely she is from, she could be from Polly's flat, she could be from the High Street Money, money Box, which I have, uh, but together they were definitely uh, in the um, like jewel case, it's like a big case with like a street going down with other characters, with animals, cars, etc. So I guess they are both from, from this set. They are in really, really good condition. Um, no paint drop, the face is intact, both arms. <laughs> That's amazing, really. And actually, how funny is it to find uh, the small dolls, don't find any compacts, but find the small dolls separately at flea markets. Um, yeah, there uh, it was the very first time that I actually also picked up some um, cassette tapes. Um, really not so much, uh, like, I, I never was so much into um, collecting or looking through uh, the children's cassette tapes at flea markets, but I think I should do that from now. Um, because, yeah, you can find, like, things like Lady Lovely Locks and Rainbow Bride. <laughs> um, this is actually, like, I, 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 I know that there are people who also collect um, those cassette tapes. Also, like, the cassette tape uh, culture in Germany was really big in the 80s and 90s. Every, like, um, toy... Um, like line and cartoon show and everything um they got like these audio cassettes where stories are told about these characters um really well produced most often and i also listened to uh, stuff like i had wendy cassettes i had uh, disney like the disney movies but just on like audio cassettes uh, stuff like that i know benjamin blümchen bibi blocksberg all that stuff um, but I mean, I was a little bit too young to uh, have gotten into Lady Lovely Locks or Rainbow Bride, for example. So I've never listened to those. So here you can see it. It's the, uh, the German name Lady Lockenlicht and Regina Regenbogen. This is even the first um, part here number one which is nice to start with this this is number 11 from rainbow bride um, I do not own a cassette player anymore <laughs> so currently I have no way to listen to them uh, it's really more about collecting them having the nice covers but let me tell you I actually bought like just yesterday I bought myself a Walkman uh, let's hope it really works good, just on eBay, um, so I'm able to at least try them. Uh, the other two that I also picked up from the seller, um, not many people will know about this because this is a German thing. Um, I had those. This is like my childhood. Uh, part one and part two of one of the Zams books made into an audio cassette. Um, this is what I listen to all the time. I was a huge fan of the uh, Zams. Those were books uh, written by Paul Ma. A really, really good line of children's books. Um, very close to my heart and I've listened to the audio cassettes all the time. So when I found like these two that I wanted to pick up and she had part one and part two of the fourth um, Zams um, book on audio cassette, I was like, sure, I just also want to get them. Um, so <laughs> this flea market was already worth it but there was more. This is a Ninja Turtles. Uh, Usagi, I think Usagi Bujimbo but I mean his ears are missing. Still. Not bad. I have them. Like biker mice from Mars. Uh, definitely like Marvel and DC. Uh, some newer turtles. Some Funkos, even like some Star Wars. It's not bad.
that. Well, just a fakey pony, sadly. Fashion poly, as always, and a 20% cola, rainbow dash, whatever that is. Are you not cool with that? I picked up this very broken and um, not in a good condition uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toy. This is, I think I also said it in the, in the uh, clip already, this is um, Usaki Jumbo, Jojimbo. <laughs> so it's actually a Usagi is the name for rabbit in Japanese, so it's a rabbit, it's missing his ears. Uh, it's from the second wave, so it's from 1998. Um, it's a vintage turtle figurine. Uh, he was in this bin of the cheap ones because he was kind of broken. 250, I said no, let's meet at 2 euro. Nobody else will pick this up. No turtle collector will pick this up because it's so broken. Uh, so he will have a nice place on my shelf, together with a cave turtle uh, dinosaur here and all that other stuff. So why not? Uh, by the way, all of this uh, stuff with all of these ponies and the Polly Pockets and da 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 price-wise, um, she had actually fixed prices. So per cassette, uh, it was like two euro, and these small pollies, fifty cents is really good. Online one poly pocket doll can go for five to eight euro or something, you know. Um, some of the fakies, the bigger ones, she wanted four euro. We mashed it all together and like she was like, oh let's make 24 euro, then let's make um, 22 euro, but, but in the end we met at 20 euro, which which is okay considering like G2 ponies and G3.5 and big fakies and cassettes and polys and blah 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 blah. So, um, and she says she's always there. Same as also this seller where I got the uh, turtle figurine. Um, and they always have new stuff. So, might as well um, try this flea market out more often. Um, the last uh, vendor, it was all about cassettes again. more audio cassettes. Um, you know, when you just start it and then you see this whole vendor all with um, children's audio cassette tapes. And the first one that like jumps at you is a My Little Pony one. Of course, you, you dig deeper and I found more stuff. So 
this is the most amazing uh, amazing thing he also said like oh they are actually worth a little bit more why did I put it into the two euro pile because he also has a pile of where some of the cassettes are a little bit more expensive so I guess lucky me that he put it into the pile where every cassette was two euro and um, then three for five and then uh, six for ten you know, that, that stuff. I definitely um, want to show you what the um, pony one looks inside but let's just start showing you yeah, my little pony Barbie and the other ones are four more of the Zams cassettes so now I have every single Zams cassette that I had as a child and I'm looking forward so much to listening to it I probably will know the cassettes still by heart I listen to them so often so I have here uh, it's in two uh, parts the first book in uh, audio cassettes so Eine Woche voller Samstage part one and two um, the second book is one cassette am uh, Samstag kam der Samst zurück and uh, the third book and uh, um, neue Punkte für das Sams also in one part and then I have the fourth book as you already saw in two parts there are more so there are more uh, Zams books written after those four but these are the four cassettes and the books that I owned when I was a child I still own the books um, and I don't know if any other cassettes were produced so the first cassettes are uh, are like from the 80s so the books the first book is from the 70s so these three first cassettes they were produced um, in 1983 or 82 um, of course these versions here are a little bit newer so they are from the 90s um, but still what's what's on the cassette is from from the 80s this one was produced in 1993 and these ones are from 1997 so that's like they were released right when I was into it, so my childhood. Um, yeah, the other two, like the uh, Lady Lovely Locks, is from 1989. The uh, Rainbow Bright one is from 1986. Then I picked up this Barbie cassette from 1989 and this My Little Pony one from 1987. Here you can see Megan and Sundance at the cover, and it's called. Um, Annabelle in Ponyland, so Megan in Ponyland, and Katrina the Mighty. So it's, it's a little bit like the movie, I think. This is the cassette, it doesn't look very interesting, but the inside is also pretty cool. I mean, at the back you can see the ponies here, and here is an advertisement for the pony magazines that I do showcase videos of. I have a lot of them. Uh, that's interesting because this is actually a pony that has, I think it has never been released in Germany. It's a cupcake. Um, and then inside here, an advertisement for the Pony Mummy Club. And here you could color in. This is supposed to be um, confetti. So, so cool what's inside uh, the, this little like booklet from the My Little Pony um, cassette tape. Uh, the other cassette tapes, like uh, Rainbow Bright, etc., they don't look so special from the inside, so there's nothing very special, but I want to show them to you in detail anyways. This is the Barbie one. So, Barbie at the beauty shop, number 22, and yeah, the other ones I have showed already. So, such a good find, such a good find. So, all in all, for me, very successful flea market days. Uh, lots of ponies, um, fakies, but also real ponies, these cassettes, so many LPS, um, like Polly Pockets, all the stuff I really like. So uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed these two videos because you will have seen me in this look like twice now in a video. So. I really hope these flea market videos are interesting for you. If if you like, want me to make more normal hauls again, I can also do that. But I mean, if I'm out flea market hunting anyways, then I can just pop out the camera. So, um, so thank you for watching. See you real soon, and may the toys be with you. Bye.